Uh, and Namoto, thank you for uh, arranging this. With OSHA, we talked we thought about a topic that was timely, uh, whereas uh, folks are being bombarded by collaboration tools. We're seeing it in the field. We're seeing with our customer base, we work uh, with state, local, and higher education and K through 12. So we thought this was timely and relevant uh, to, uh, to share some of our content and some of our experience with our customers as well. So to start it off, we'll, um, we'll, we'll be joined by Matt Douglas from KBT, the Senior Director of Sales Engineering. He'll talk about the evolution of collaboration. We'll actually share this with our state and local education team two weeks ago internally. And our team thought that this was very relevant. So we have this broken down into three bits today. Uh, Matt will talk about for about 15 minutes. Uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll start up a video case study from Chris Alice from Moorhead State University. I'll apologize in advance. It's, uh, it's a little salesy. Uh, Mark and I, Mark reminded me of that this morning, but um, we both agreed that it does hit the mark with relevance and what the topics that we think will really hit home for you. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with Kirk Rooney, who might many of you have met. Uh, Kirk is our senior solutions consultant for collaboration tools and for hosting. And uh, Kirk spent a lot of time with various customers in the state of Rhode Island with Ocean members. Um, and Kurt joins me in the one on one ones with customers, and then we'll wrap up the QA and the closing prizes for the swag uh, that, that Mark mentioned as well. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Matt. Well, fantastic, Paul. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to share this. Paul said that this is a kind of a, a short presentation of some of the things that we're seeing in the industry. Uh, what are what kind of feedback we're getting from our customers, and we kind of call it the evolution of collaboration, and, and, and where we all kind of are, are sitting today. So hopefully, some of this is useful. Um, you see on the screen here a concept called the service journey, and um, I'm old enough here, you know, on this webcast that I remember having to go to physical locations, right, to get things done. I couldn't even dial in to get something. Um, and of course, that journey has moved to you know telephones, and you know again, I'm old enough to remember going to lunch and seeing a while you're out slip, right? And now we're moving to this kind of world of uh, you know S uh, SMS text and you know IVRs and web apps, and so this is certainly a, a changing journey. Um, as we've all been experiencing this, though, COVID has just completely you know changed it's changed everything it, it maybe seems a little hyperbole there but it has significantly changed how we're talking you know to our customers to our students you know how uh, you know how our associates are responding etc and so it's um it's a lot of it's a lot of new things we have to take in here um and, and really right it's it's almost kind of changing kind of the old way to the new way you know, we we had we all kind of grew up with predictable facilities and predictable entry points, you know, and, and requests from students, et cetera, and in-person management, right? Um, and, and those things are changing now. We've had to, to throw a lot of people that work from home. Um, our, you know, our customers, if you would, want to get to us in different ways, right? So this is this is really um, you know, and you can see even guys. I say the word faces on a screen here. You know, we're doing this right now. You know, a year ago, I did so much of my work on a cell phone or on my desk phone, and ninety percent of my communications is now in some kind of collaboration tool. All right, and this this kind of work from home that we've thrown everybody into um, it has it hasn't been easy. I mean, I, I you know personally, I'm working here from my living room, and I haven't left my living room since last March. Um, so there's a lot of struggles, right, on how we're adapting to this new world and these new entry points and where our people can work from, et cetera. And it's it's challenging. It, there's, you know, I don't know about you guys in your situations, but there are employees and managers who are adapting and thriving, and there's others that it's not so easy for, right? Um, and, and so again, these new these new struggles, right, on both sides, both kind of from our quote customers and from our associates and employees. And of course, now everybody's talking about Microsoft Teams, and and what does that mean, right? This uh, you know a lot of times I, I put this little this kind of thing from a movie here, the giant behemoth, right? It's, it's 
sometimes the greatest thing since creation. So what are we going to do with teams there? And, and what we're really seeing is that there are a lot of new paths forward. And we hope to be one of those partners for you that can start to you know, work with the kinds of business outcomes and new challenges that you have and bringing you some new solution sets, designing some new outcomes for you, et cetera. And these paths, the kind of new paths forward, if you were, if you would, a lot of it we talk about, and you're going to hear more here real quick in a slide of kind of working from anywhere, right? Being able to take that request, whether I'm working in the office, whether I'm working from home, whether I'm working remotely on vacation, right? Um, and that there really is no wrong door even. We're having to respond and try and build paths in for requests, no matter whether where they come in from, right? Whether it's a voice, an advanced IVR, you know, applications, web chats, these kinds of things. And so really, you know, what we see as a service provider is how do we come in and help build uh, kind of new workloads that are specific, you know, to the job trying to be done using these new collaboration tools. Um, and we feel if they're done right, they can, they can be more inclusive. There's a lot of new technologies around speech recognition and translation, things like this that can, we think also even make a more inclusive environment. And anything that you do here, it, it needs to be kind of either no code or low code. You know, our customers are looking for solutions that are easy to deploy now, solving those business problems to, you know, today, because those things are changing in another year or two years. We've seen that change already, right, in the last 12 months. So we believe there's a lot of new paths forward that um, as a next generation service provider, we can help in the ocean community as you, as you meet some of these challenges. And again, one of the things I mentioned earlier, right, is this, this idea of a, of a no wrong door or a no wrong desk. Um, because workloads are changing, right? We're, we, as I said, we've had to move people home, but the tools that they use now, that, you know, they have to be able to get to telephone calls. They have to be able to get to web chat requests, uh, SMSs, emails, all those kinds of things. So. How do we build these new structures that can enable our employees to be even more responsive, but from really working from anywhere? Uh, and that's a big pressure that we've seen, again, particularly in this post-COVID world. And then the idea, again, of no wrong door, um, you know, we as consumers, um, you know, wh whether, I'm, whether I'm buying something from Amazon or your students or parents want to get to resources, we have to continue to evolve and enable kind of, you know, multiple paths in, you know, whether that's again, web chat, SMS, you know, text, uh, you know, calling on a mobile device, email, um, and then even the IVRs. We're seeing a lot of work um, and a lot of innovation on using kind of next generation IVRs with natural language and speech recognition to be able to do even better and more effective triage to get that, you know, to get that consumer, get the student or parent to the right place quicker, right? And, and, the, and the goal of this, right, is to bring together kind of new entry points, new, you know, no wrong door, you know, no wrong desk, work from anywhere to really then give a better experience, right? Um, to try and do things for our, you know, for our constituents quicker, um, you know, more productive, right? Um, and again, this idea of any device, any entry point, any agent, um, CBTS has been doing a lot of work across education, government, you know, the commercial sector, really enabling these kinds of next generation paths. And in the end, right, you also want to make sure that you've got actionable data from that. And so as we go in and, and do any or kind of enable or work on any of these next generation kind of outcomes, um, the analytics, the reporting, uh, keeping track of the customer experience. You'll see people talk about CX, the customer experience. Um, these are all very important things to kind of designing any kind of new workload or new process. So for us, it's been a, this COVID experience really has, you know, come to, you know, brought, brought to mind now or brought to recognition for our customers that the traditional kind of uh, customer premise equipment you know, customer premise solutions, that office somewhere, these are new challenges that um, really are kind of changing expectation we think are going to 
um, you know, really change how we do business, even post COVID when we all come back in the office. And I think one of the things for us in the partnership that we have with Ocean um, and, and us is kind of, we consider ourselves a next generation service provider is that we've spent a lot of time bringing together kind of the right um, network of solutions, if you would. Um, and, and whether that means, you know, enabling Microsoft Teams, um, and Kirk's going to talk about some things around Teams and WebEx later on. Um, but really, what are those clouds out there um, that we can bring together as a service provider? Now, uh, some of you might not know, we, we actually, we, we go back over 100 years. We started our business as being a phone company, and CBTS through that time has evolved. Um, and so that, that part of that evolution for us then is bringing together these kinds of solutions, whether, you know, whether you need, you know, on-premise support in your phone system, whether you're moving that to UCAS, you know, unified communications as a service and those kinds of collaboration tools, contact center challenges, right? And I mentioned IVR, you know, we, we, we continue doing more and more work with kind of artificial intelligence and IVR. And, linking to you know google voice and watson for for you know analytics these kinds of things so we've got a a, a very, very deep bench of bringing that these tools together aws applications etc and how do we build you know kind of new web hooks and new solutions for you so that no matter where your employees are working as you see on the left whether they're working from home um, I said, said state premise here. This was, I apologize. This was from a, a presentation we did uh, in, in government for Ohio. But whether that user is working in a, you know, a team space, a UCAS phone, a contact center, your premise PBX, um, CBTS and our relationship with Ocean, how we've connected to your network, the solutions that we bring, we'd be very excited to explore what some of these new things that we're seeing here. So. Um, again, I hope that this was a little bit, uh, you know, kind of a couple of insights or eye opening for you, but this is kind of the journey that we've seen our customers, particularly in this last year, as the pressures of COVID have uh, really driven what are these next generation solutions and options that we might bring to the table. So um, thanks team for letting me present this. I hope it was a little bit useful for you guys. Terrific, thank you, Matt. Uh, while I'm setting up the video piece, uh, we, we will have Q&A at the end, but I'll pause here for a comment while I'm setting up. Uh, if you have comments or questions for Matt's piece of it, I mean, at the end of the day, um, everything falls back to you in IT. So if you're you're there to make sure your end users, your students, or your patients, if you're in healthcare, have, have the you know the, a great experience. That's all what we're trying to drive. So you as the administrators or the leaders in IT, it's, it's up to you really to be responsible to make sure that you have the right tools, the right collaboration tools. There's so many out there picking the right one, but it also, uh, more importantly, to support them. So if the user is having a bad time getting training on it or just struggling with the tools, again, it, it, barely or not, it falls back on you to make sure that they have a good experience. So uh, when we're here to help you with that, I think the video will kind of paint a picture, but um, I'll be quiet for a minute and whoever wants to speak about or just comment on Matt's piece, please, it'd be great. I had a quick comment, uh, Paul, and that I think a good point is when we talk about coming in and being a partner with building some of these next generation solutions, it is not always about completely replacing your collaboration environment or, you know, we, we come in and, and work uh, really as a program partner. Uh, because you've got big investments in particular parts of your platform. And so as we come in and help, you know, you, you want some help design a new solution, it is not always about completely replacing your collaboration platform. It might be in how do we integrate what you're doing today with other parts of our solution set to do these things. So, yeah. Excellent. I, I'd like to make a point here as well. I apologize to everybody. I was having problems with my video, but um, just to uh, reiterate, one of the reasons why we have a partnership with uh, CBTS is um, uh, over the years, uh, we've spent uh, time trying to put resources directly on, on the network. An example of that, or a few examples of that, would be the Google, Netflix, and Akamai caches that we've had uh, directly on our network. And uh, recently, we've been building paths down to a Azure AWS. And GCP. So when you look for a, uh, a system 
to a lot of points of collaboration partner uh, we look for nationally recognized and that's what that's the cbts they make relative to the video hey mark can you hear me is it okay off a little bit at the end there okay i'll just make a comment a quick comment on the video um uh, on behalf of our our, our members um and I told uh, CBTS that I would say this, so uh, this isn't a surprise to them. This is a great video. Uh, this is Chris Howes, the CIO of Moorhead State. It's a little lengthy. It's a little salesy, uh, but it's certainly relative to, to um, our, into the issues that many of our members are wrestling with. Um, so uh, the other thing is that it took place during COVID. Uh, Right. So very germane to uh, relevant issues today. So just wanted to prep everybody. Thank you, Mark. I will pull it up now. Learn about how MSU navigated the rapid change to work from home. Chris, could you tell us more about Moorhead State University and your job role? Sure, I'd be happy to do so. As I mentioned, I'm currently the uh, CIO here at, at Moorhead State University. I've been at Moorhead State for approximately six years now. Uh, Moorhead State uh, is a regional public university located uh, in the foothills of Daniel Boone National Forest in eastern Kentucky. Uh, we offer undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral degree programs uh, with an approximate enrollment of about 9,700 students. Uh, we're nationally recognized for our space science program uh, and our extensive partnership with NASA. Very impressive. So, Chris, can you provide some background on your partnership with CBGS? Sure, sure, absolutely. So, the story of the MSU and CBTS partnership is, is an interesting one. Um, several years ago, MSU was looking for a partner to help provide um, some enterprise class managed services to us. Uh, we were at the time uh, in the midst of a fairly large and complex technology program that was comprised of several different projects to really refresh all of our uh, network and communication services on campus. And uh, we reached out to CBTS and started engaging with them and discussing uh, our expectations and the ongoing projects we had in place and found that they were very receptive to coming in and helping us uh, both in the short term and long term. Uh, we've been a, a customer of the UCAS platform since 2016 uh, and we also partner with CBTS on network management and monitoring. Uh, we also do some staff and resource augmentation uh, as well as working with CBTS on a number of other technology projects that are ongoing as well. How was the implementation experience? Sure. We, at the time, we were really at a crossroads um, in our project process. We were trying to determine uh, if we wanted to remain with an on-premise solution or if we wanted to look at uh, other options, including hosted solutions. And so we discussed um, those options with CBTS and made the strategic decision that we were going to put our investments in hosted solutions um, as a long-term strategy, uh, not only with the UCAS options, but also with other, other technologies on campus. And as I mentioned earlier, we were in the midst of a fairly large and complex infrastructure project to refresh all of those technologies on campus. Um, and we presented CBTS with several challenges, uh, including aggressive timelines and deliverables. And what we found was the CBTS project team quickly engaged with our internal resources and we worked to, together to deliver the UCAS implementation with uh, minimal issues, uh, minimal disruptions, and also on time. Again, within a very, very aggressive timeline, uh, our existing legacy PBX that we had on campus was end of life. And so we were really trying to be aggressive in moving to the new platform. And CBTS delivered on all accounts. How is the support experience? You know, Kurt, as I mentioned, we were coming from a legacy PBX environment that was on premise. And again, we were really at a crossroads trying to determine whether we uh, stick with an on-premise solution or we look at a hosted solution 
from a service provider. Uh, and we did not have the skill sets in-house to adequately provide for long-term support of a hosted solution or of the new technologies. Uh, and so we reached out to CBTS. We partnered with CBTS to provide not only the initial implementation of the UCAS solution, but also provide ongoing support and maintenance of the new technology platforms, uh, including UCAS and the network infrastructure. And we challenged CBTS early on to continue to deliver value after the original project was complete, uh, not just to maintain and provide support, but to continue to grow and evolve the services around UCAS. And what we found is they've been very willing to do that, uh, willing to listen to our requests, and uh, very willing to uh, provide ongoing support uh, and meet, meet our requests as needed. How were you able to rapidly migrate to work from home? Sure, so it's certainly been a rapidly evolving landscape, uh, not just for us, but for uh, many other organizations and universities across the nation. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, Kurt, it really happened for us in a matter of days. Uh, we were having, um, you know, I recall the week that it happened, we were having executive meetings on Monday and it was business as usual. And by the end of that week, by Friday, we were announcing the shifts to a completely virtual environment for uh, all of our campus community, including our faculty, staff, and students. Uh, and so the shift happened very quickly. And obviously technology was a major component in making that shift as quickly as it happened and making it successful for everyone involved. Uh, what we found was we had most of the technologies uh, in place that we needed to make that shift, uh, but we also found that some of those technologies may have not been fully adopted as maybe they should have been. And so we ramped up our efforts to provide some additional training, some additional resources to our faculty and staff and also our students uh, to try to make that transition as smooth as possible. Um, and so ultimately, I think it was a fairly smooth transition, all things considered, um, and we continue to build on that going forward. And what were your top priorities? Sure, that's, that's a really good question. You know, student experience for us and you know, student success is always a top priority. And that, that really didn't change during the migration to work from home or virtual learning. Um, if anything, it elevated the importance of providing uh, good technology sol solutions and tools that facilitates effective communication between faculty and, and students and staff. How did your partnership with CBTS help you as you prepared to migrate to work from home? Yeah, absolutely. Really, when we were looking at uh, migrating quickly to a virtual environment, it was all about flexibility providing that flexibility to our, our staff, to our faculty, and to our students. And CB, CBTS was certainly key in that arena. Um, everything from providing the UCAS services to allow our staff and our faculty to work remotely and maintain communicate, effective communications remotely, uh, to providing virtual learning. Once we shifted to virtual learning, we really uh, leveraged WebEx uh, exclusively for that environment. And uh, CBTS was certainly key in making sure that we were able to successfully provide those services to our end users and do it in a way that uh, was uh, as least disruptive as possible, um, giving everything else that was going on at the time. Are there any enhancements or improvements that you have been researching or considering? Sure, I'll give you a, a really recent example. We are looking at ways to provide or enhance the WebEx services that we're offering to our faculty and to our students, and how do we make that more engaging? How do we provide um, additional services to students that maybe we haven't provided in the past? One of the areas that we're looking at and we recently um, decided to, to move forward with is the Cisco WebEx assistance component of Cisco WebEx that provides closed captioning uh, to our students and to our faculty. It provides some other services that we weren't able to offer in the fall, but we are going to be able to offer in the spring. So that's a very recent example of something that we're looking at to just continually to make improvements in that area. Uh, because for us, it's all about student experience. What were some of the lessons that you learned? Sure, absolutely. Again, as I mentioned, flexibility is, is of critical importance, um, not just during the initial migration, but also ongoing. Uh, what we found is that we have to be both reactive and proactive in our approach. Uh, to responding to this pandemic and the challenges it, it, uh, 
produces. Uh, and so we are responding to the current needs of our faculty and staff, making sure we provide the resources they need today to be successful, but also looking at the spring semester that's upcoming. Uh, how do we be uh, even better prepared for the spring semester? How do we react uh, more quickly if we have to go to a remote work environment and a virtual learning environment in spring? Uh, and so we're looking at ways that, that we can be um, better prepared to, to do that and respond to that. Uh, well, one of the lessons learned that really hit home for me uh, was that there's still challenges that remain uh, for equitable access to technologies and connectivity for many of our students. We serve um, a service region that uh, is low income, high poverty, and the access to high speed internet is lacking in many areas. And so, uh, again, challenges remain to provide equitable access to connectivity and to technology resources for many of our students. And that really came to light throughout this process. Uh, and so, I think that's something we have to continue to focus on and continue to, fo to, to improve uh, as we move forward. What makes CBTS a great partner? So that, that is a, it's certainly a good question. Um, it, Kirk, what I would say is that MSU can consider CBTS to be one of our most important strategic technology partners. Um, CBTS has demonstrated a willingness to engage with our teams uh, and align their goals with our institutional priorities. And they're always willing to help us solve technology problems. They're very flexible. Uh, we often throw many problems at CBTS and they always come back with solutions. Uh, and we really consider them an extension of our internal IT team uh, and really consider them part of the IT family. Uh, they continue to provide exceptional delivery of the services that we consume from CBTS. Uh, and really, one of the key things that I would bring out here is that we have a terrific account team and support team at CBTS. And that really makes all the difference in the world and maintaining a healthy partnership long term. Thank you so much for your time, Chris. Thank you for the opportunity. It's certainly been my pleasure. Great. Thank you for hanging in there, folks. Um, I think I think it was a good timely video. So at this point, uh, I'll reopen it up for questions as well for a minute, and then I'll turn it over to Kirk Rooney. All right, Kirk, why don't you take us home? Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. So uh, those of you that were on video and uh, not dialed in, um, yes, that was me in the video as well, too. I actually put that together with uh, Chris probably about a month and a half ago or so. So uh, he was a real pleasure to, to work with, that's for sure. Um, so what I actually wanted to do was kind of talk a little bit about collaboration tools, uh, your most popular collaboration tools on the market, as well as, uh, as Matt alluded to or made reference to earlier, the uh, behemoth that is Microsoft Teams that we're seeing a lot of people on. So um, I thought that'd be relevant for us to have a conversation kind of around Cisco, uh, Cisco's response to Microsoft Teams and then CBTS's response uh, to Microsoft Teams. Uh, as Chris Hell said inside of the video, he presents, uh, you know, problems or IT uh, problems that he has, and we always come back with uh, very good, uh, thoughtful solutions. So CBTS has actually put together our own solution so that we can offer uh, methods of being able to, as Matt Douglas mentioned earlier, integrating, right? The idea of making things come across seamless. Why can you not choose your collaboration tool um, but integrate seamlessly with the UCAS uh, platform that you want to uh, be running on. So I thought it'd be relevant to kind of make a, a description and maybe some, some slides, network diagrams, or for some visual aid of how we actually make those things happen. So in the world of collaboration tools, um, <clears throat> you heard Matt make reference that uh, a lot of people are doing collaboration so much more today. Uh, I was talking to my manager just uh, last week about how um, I'm doing so much more now that I'm working from home. Um, and it's all because of these collaboration tools. I used to drive into the office and the way I would collaborate with people is I'd walk over to their desks and talk to them. 
uh, right? Uh, now, when I want to collaborate with somebody, I do a video, peer-to-peer -peer video call with them on the fly, uh, you know, where we set up sessions uh, regularly to uh, talk and communicate, or we set up group chat sessions or desktop sharing anymore, right? So what we're finding out there in the market from the virtually almost all customers that we talk to is that there's a handful of tools that they have uh, adapted, and um, some of them are on the Cisco side, and these are primarily Cisco shops. So somebody potentially that's already running on a Cisco Unified Communication Manager, let's say, they might have already adapted or deployed Cisco Jabber as their solution for, um, you know, a soft phone as well as being uh, able to do instant message or chat. Um, but Cisco, um, as a response to Microsoft Teams uh, and just wanting to enhance their technology on collaboration, they've had a big push onto Cisco WebEx Teams, which is a tool that. I use uh, daily. I, just so you know, I also use Microsoft Teams daily as well, too. It's kind of frustrating uh, that it's like a good portion of the organization's adapted Cisco and a good portion's adapted Microsoft. Uh, so we're finding that Cisco WebEx Teams is a very popular tool that's being used out there. Um, you can create persistent group chat sessions, peer to peer video, um, the idea that you can share content. Um, you know, or even link it to uh, SharePoint if you want it to, if you've got centralized uh, locations for sharing files with one another. Um, so it is a, a, a fantastic tool um, that a lot of people have adapted and used today. And that is Cisco's tool that just comes standard inside of a CBTS UKS solution. Um, but many customers have the investment into their Microsoft platform. They have, you know, E3, E5 licenses, or in the case of academia, uh, A3, A5 licensing, right? That gives them the ability to utilize the Microsoft Teams platform. Um, once again, a lot of the same great feature functionality that you get out of Cisco. Um, you know, I talk to people that use Microsoft more and they don't do one thing I don't do on WebEx or vice versa, right? Uh, all inherently great feature functionality for, for persistent group chats, one-on-one, -on -one, peer to peer video, uh, the whole nine yards, right? The problem is <clears throat> when you look at doing something like Microsoft Teams, the idea is what's the best fit for our organization when it comes to our UKs or our voice strategy, and that might not be Microsoft. Um, so now you're introducing yet another application that your, you know, your customers, which uh, basically are the faculty and staff, right, uh, of the universities, now they have to run another application and remember, well, I'm making an outside telephone call, so I can't use Microsoft. So now I got to open up my Cisco tool so that I can utilize access to the PSTN, the public switch telephone network. Uh, and that's not always the best fit. Um, you know, you want to make things as easy as possible uh, for your customers. So for those individuals out there that have adopted and they're utilizing Cisco Jabber, Jabber or the Cisco WebEx Teams platform, um, Cisco's um, platform looks very similar to this right here. So I, I always do visual aid. I feel like it's always the best way to go. So in a scenario with the CBTS UCAS solution, we have connectivity to the public switch telephone network inside of our CBTS cloud where we actually run multiple clusters of phone systems that we stand up on a per customer basis in multiple data centers, right? Um, and we've got redundant PSTN connectivity into those clouds, all right? And we have created NNIs or network to network interfaces from the ocean uh, metropolitan area network, their fiber network into our data centers. That way we can deliver a quality of service across private IP space and not the internet uh, to any location that has ocean connectivity. Uh, this allows you to have an end user that is operating, let's say, off of their mobile device or a laptop, and they can make a telephone call that would actually go across the ocean WAN uh, across those fiber circuits to our data centers where you have PSTN connectivity. Um, this also means that you could have uh, a hosted enterprise UC phone, which is what we call our platform. You could have one of our Cisco IP phones uh, and you could have your collaboration tool. So you could make calls uh, on the IP phone. 
you could actually be on a call on the IP phone, but even use your uh, collaboration tool, Jabber or WebEx Teams, to do call control like hold or transfer if you wanted to, or starting a conference call. So these items can actually all work together as a single DID or a direct inward dial telephone number. Um, and we do have uh, in place expressways so that you can have remote workers that can use the soft phones for PSTN connectivity through your WebEx Teams tools. Um, and all they need is internet connectivity. There's no need to VPN back into the corporate network. So in a CBTS solution, if you would want to call it out of the box, we offer Jabber or WebEx Teams collaboration tools that can interoperate with uh, a desk phone if you want it to, or you could be on campus uh, operating across the ocean network or just at home over the internet. So that is the out of the box side on Cisco collaboration. Now, um, Cisco came up with a response, if you would, to this Microsoft Teams collaboration side, because Cisco realizes that there are people out there that have their A3 licenses and they're operating off of WebEx Teams, or sorry, uh, Microsoft Teams for collaboration, and they don't want to have to uh, open a separate uh, tool application to make a telephone call. So what Cisco did was they developed what they call their client side integration. And I have the ability to demo all of these things, just so you know. So if anybody wanted to actually see real experience uh, when you do these things, I can showcase these at any time. Um, but <clears throat> in this environment, everything looks the same out in the cloud. There's the PSTN connectivity with all the redundancies of the CBTS cloud, UCLAS platform, the ocean wide area network connectivity that goes right into your locations. Um, but now in this scenario, you're actually operating off of the Microsoft Teams client. Now, if anybody's made a call on Microsoft Teams, right, Microsoft Teams to Microsoft Teams, when you make a call, it launches a separate window. So it is the Microsoft Teams soft phone window, if you would. It has a little picture of somebody in the middle with call control options like hold, or transfer. In this scenario here, what Cisco's done is in the Microsoft application store, you just download what they call Cisco WebEx calling. And what happens is you can actually go to make a call to anybody uh, at, across the public switch telephone network. And all it does is it launches a separate window like it did before on a Microsoft Teams call, but now it just launches a separate Cisco window that looks the exact same essentially with a picture of the person in the middle and your call control options going across the screen. This allows you to make it so that a user wanting to make a call across the public switch telephone network doesn't have to remember, well, now I've got to go to my Cisco soft phone, open it up to make a call out, search for the person and hit call. You can do everything through the Microsoft Teams application um, and essentially works the same as it does uh, if you were doing a Microsoft Teams telephone call. Um, it is a client-side integration, so you do have to do uh, have an, the application of the Cisco uh, WebEx Teams or Cisco Jabber client still installed, but it's seamless to the end user for making telephone calls. So this is the Cisco response. Um, CBTS, as I said, we, we looked at this as being a uh, problem for customers. Uh, when we looked at it, we said, what what is going above and beyond? What is something that we can bring that's unique to our UCAS platform um, that allows the customer to utilize the tools that they want to use and not have them have to do uh, multiple application installs? We want to make it uh, the same experience for an internal call across Microsoft as well as PSTN. And the answer that we came to uh, for that, the CBTS response was uh, establishing what we call a Microsoft direct route option between the CBTS UCAS platform and the Microsoft Teams platform. Essentially what we've done is we've created a SIP trunk between the CBTS cloud and the Microsoft Teams platform. And with this, we've created a common dial plan between basically this Microsoft Teams phone system and the CBTS phone system. What this allows us to do is it makes it so that if somebody were to call your DID, the call could come in to the CBTS cloud, 
we could across this would be oceans uh wan still we could make this call come in ring your uh your ip phone that's on your desk and at the exact same time we'd send that call to your microsoft teams platform that rings your microsoft uh teams application what does that mean you are truly using the full suite of microsoft teams and the functionality of it and it, it it basically makes it so that you're on one platform <clears throat> to your end users, right? And there's no additional applications. We basically are doing, if you want to look at it as like a server side integration. So nobody's any the wiser to everybody. It looks like they're using the Microsoft mobile application to make a call, but it's going across our UCAS platform, right? Um, they could be <clears throat> in your office environment making calls from Microsoft Teams or from a desk phone, all the same DID telephone number for inbound and outbound telephone calls. So whatever it, the collaboration tool is that you would choose, whether it be a Cisco WebEx or a Cisco Jabber or Microsoft that you chose, there's actually multiple methods in which we can deploy so that to your end users, they get the best possible experience. Um, and we work with customers and talk to them all the time in putting together solutions that could be a whole CBTS UKS solution, or even we work with customers on doing hybrid style solutions that integrate these multiple platforms, uh, but it, it can allow you to uh, utilize your Microsoft licensing um, so that you don't lose the benefit of that asset, the investment that you've made. Um, so with that said, that was a brief overview of the Cisco and CBTS response on how you can improve your end users collaboration tools um, and how they operate with the PSTM. Um, <clears throat> with that, I actually will um, just take a second to review because a lot of a lot of people were probably on the call and saying, well, what is the UKS solution and what's included in it? And, and what exact, how, how, how does this, how does this, uh, how, how's this something that I can even subscribe to? So <clears throat> for CBTS, our hosted enterprise UC solution, we have some differentiators in the market. And I, I like to kind of just point out to customers what they are and what's actually included inside of the solution. So uh, as part of our solution, it is uh, Cisco powered as you, probably have been able to pick up at the core. This essentially is the Cisco HCS platform. And if you've not heard of that, basically what it is, is it is the cloud architecture for the Cisco Unified Communication Manager, which is widely known as Cisco's enterprise phone system, if you would. So a cloud architecture of the Cisco enterprise platform. And at the core, what Cisco is bringing to the table are a lot of the things that you would expect out of a, a next-gen phone system. Mobility across any operating system, laptops, Macs, um, you know, iPads, tablets, droids, iPhones, uh, right? So complete mobility for their applications and being able to be mobile. Uh, unified messaging, everybody wants to do voicemail to email these days, right? Or fax to email. Um, peer to peer video. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I do peer to peer video all the time, uh, every day anymore. Uh, and then the WebEx Teams tool is included inside of this platform as well. Now, what makes this the CBTS uh, solution and not the Cisco solution is the wrapper of services that we put around it. And whenever you're on our platform, you receive all of these services and wrappers made available to you or they're included. So for instance, I've made reference that public switch telephone network uh, was included on the prior slides. That means that we supply uh, DID, uh, local calling, long distance, all as part of the solution. So that's inherent. So there's no need to continue to pay for PRIs or SIP trunking uh, or long distance with any other providers. It's included with our service. Mass notification has become an incredibly popular uh, aspect to unified communications. Um, this is actually done through Informacast. So they're single wire Informacast uh, fusion licenses we include. This gives you the ability to uh, do uh, automatic or manual triggers that can send messages to on-prem devices. So anything with an IP, if you would, digital signage, uh, screen pops on desk phones or on um, uh, uh, your laptops, 
Um, overhead paging um, is included as something that can be done with this, uh, but it also, we include in here mobile. So mobile could be SMS, uh, right, email, um, Twitter even, so social media can be included inside as part of the solution. So mass notification is something that we include as part of our solution um, called detailed reporting. This is different than just a standard CDR data dump kind of scenario. This is actually a portal that we uh, retain data in for 12 months on every single DID. So if you were looking to understand uh, the number of calls that were coming in at different times of the year, you can do refined search criteria for hunt groups, auto attendance that were hit, uh, DID telephone numbers, uh, anything can be pulled through a, a portal that we established for you. Um, enhanced 911. So this is not a standard Cisco emergency responder solution. Um, we've actually have some hospitals that run on this platform that have very uh, high level um, 911 needs. So as part of our 911 solution, we work with our customers for real time location tracking, which is not a standard feature you find in the world of UCAS. Uh, if you move a phone, on most UCAS solutions from the second floor to the third floor, you have to reach out to the UCAS vendor and say, I moved a phone. Um, so if you have multiple campuses or a, you know, in a scenario where you've got to, uh, you know, move phones and you, you don't want to have to manually remember when a phone's moved to place a request, we do real time phone moves. We can notify conference and security staff via SMS or screen pops on desk phones or laptops as well as conference and security, and we record all 911 phone calls. Uh, we put a 5.9 SLA on our solution. It is 24 7365 NOC support that are all CBTS W2 employees. We do not outsource unlimited auto attendance hunt groups. Uh, we are an extension of uh, your uh, IT staff, as Chris House pointed out on the video. So this is a fully managed solution. This is not the standard, we host it, you manage it. This truly is a uh, UCAS solution that is fully managed. So this does get you out of the phone business if you want. Um, and we do supply with you with this service now access. So you can place service requests that have service level agreements associated to them uh, through ServiceNow. Uh, if you want to, as well as technical tickets. Um, we uh, supply multiple voice engineering resources as well as professional project management and weekly meetings uh, on the deployment side um, and even give you dedicated team, uh, team support moving forward through service delivery management that actually meets with you quarterly to review any service requests or technical tickets that you've done um, so that we can review what CBTS's performance has been and that we're meeting our service level agreements uh, that we have committed to you. Um, and then of course, multiple delivery options, whether it be over the internet or the ocean uh, wide area network are included too. Uh, and then um, something that we've included or that we're offering now, I, I should say, is the Microsoft Direct Route. That's the CBTS solution to the Microsoft Teams. Um, and then WebEx Meetings is an offering that we have um, that Chris said they are using heavy in the education space. And we do give you uh, an enterprise management portal. So it's an intuitive portal where you can make your own moves, ads, changes if you want it to. If you didn't want to support service requests and you just wanted to do those things yourself, we still supply access to that as well. Um, and Paul, I don't know if everybody saw, sent me a message about two minutes ago saying, you got one minute left. <laughs> so You're maybe fine. we went over just a little bit, but we wanted to make sure that we do have time to obviously get to any Q&A uh, and put that opportunity out there since we have about seven minutes left. Yeah, thank you, Kirk. I think, yeah, I think the, the message here and then what you put up there really hammers on the fact that there is no one size fits all solution. Uh, there is no one way to uh, say that one solution is a fit, the ocean sponsor point is a fit. There's so many things coming at our end users, with, be, be it Zoom, be it WebEx calling, be it Slack, WhatsApp, all those things that are out there. So we will help you with the roadmap of it. Uh, and we, we try to you know, cover what most of the users will uh, enjoy and have a good experience with. So I'll open it up now. Um, so before we open it up, and while you're thinking about a question or two, 
I want to thank uh, David Marble. Uh, David, you've been a great partner for us, uh, not only with the Ocean Partnership, but also with uh, Quilt and the other Quilt members <clears throat> being a reference for us for other regional education networks. You've been a great uh, testimonial for us, and I want to thank you and take this opportunity to do that. Well, I, um, I, I, I try to be careful about who I say good things about. <laughs> And uh, and the only reason I'm I'm saying it is because how good you you guys have been uh, in the process. I paid very close attention uh, to the process that you guys undertook when we did all of our peering architectures uh, to peer with you guys in Cincinnati and down in Ashburn, Virginia, uh, and the professionalism just on that piece of the integration and how we went about that uh, was extraordinary. And I know uh, uh, as Jacques is still on the call at. I watched obviously that integration at New England Tech and how well that all uh, went and how professional and and Kirk did use the fame, the phrase that Jock likes to say about the phone business, which, uh, which which is a big thing. I want to reiterate Paul's uh, statement about, you know, there's there's no one size fits all. The challenge with one of these types of, uh, uh, you know, of talks is, is is the level of call it generic uh, discussion about the kinds of things that you can do, uh, knowing that when we get into any one of the members, you know, we're going to have to have a real detailed discussion about the uh, centricity and use cases of the kinds of tools that you're already doing. Everybody on this call brings some measure of, of uh, historical baggage to the uh, to this problem. Uh, and uh, like Paul said, you're probably getting bombarded with you know, the term collaboration and all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, there are there are lots and lots of opportunities here. And the one thing I do, I really do uh, implore and appreciate about uh, CBTS is the breadth of understanding that they have. You know, they didn't even mention, you know, migrating, say, from an older, you know, PBX architecture and 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 what it takes to do those kinds of migrations and all that kind of stuff there's there's just a lot uh to consider but i i really do think we have a partner here that can help us with all of it so uh it looks like uh, we have a hand raised from uh douglas alexander so um thank you uh thank you appreciate that i don't David. know I don't, I don't know who that is so I'm... <laughs> some guy some guy with a generic name um, <laughs> i'm like really <laughs> Hi, uh, hi, Kirk. I, you know, I'm a former uh, K-12 tech well, director okay. for a large district with lots of buildings and lots of uh, humans. When, when this is a question for when we are in buildings and, and on site, um, the unified, the mass notifications rather uh, piece really interested me because one of the things we struggled with was in the event of an emergency of some kind, an evacuation of one or all of the buildings. How do we make sure that message gets out? Um, and how do we push it to all of our available endpoints? So do you have any stories of how, I, I think of this in the context of higher ed or large K-12, how, how it's been used in organizations to really streamline that? Because that is something that, um, you know, when active shooter drills were really in, uh, in vogue when we were all on site was a big deal. Uh, yeah, no, that, that, that's, a, that's a good question. And we actually, because you made the reference of how how do you how do you trigger or enable that kind of message? So we it's a big topic. So typically, what we do is we actually do a full demonstration of that specific solution, so that you have a good understanding behind it. However, the what we see most of the times is we can actually put in for specific end users, if you would, security personnel, especially or people that are in certain areas inside of the schools towards the front or different entryways. We can uh, put in buttons on uh, the phones themselves. We can integrate into Microsoft Teams or Cisco WebEx Teams as uh, automatic triggers, uh, and then also panic buttons. So uh, a lot of the times we find inside of the schools that they'll have like a panic button that you can give them to, to push, push down uh, to send the alert automatically. Um, there's so many different ways in which we can do triggering of messages and give you those options. Uh, and integrate in many things. Kirk, I'll add a quick little thing for Douglas here. That's one of the reasons we went with Informacast Fusion as opposed to Cisco's emergency responder. So it's probably worth doing a demo with you or showing you the capabilities because it's got the ability to 
Uh, do outbound notifications by list to have clients sitting on uh, parents' phones, those kinds of things. Um, yeah. Be able to send notifications to phones, SMS, text, email. It's a very robust platform for exactly the kind of business problems you're talking about. I mean, there are surely other platforms out there that schools use that have many or all of those features, but what they don't have is that integration into the ring That's right. that you showed of all the other unified services. Yeah. And I think that if anybody's looking to do a uh, replace of their, their VoIP system, they might consider this as well because uh, it just saves you time. And, and, and like you said, reaches all the constituencies, um, sure, including yeah. parents, parents and students, which is sometimes a tough quarter to get to. Yeah, and I actually have uh, one uh, university that, that has told me they're looking to utilize it for um, students to be able to enroll into a SMS group session with professors. So a professor can say, text this word to this telephone number and you enroll into my SMS. Uh, so therefore, now yeah. that teacher has the ability to send out messages to anybody that's enrolled. And then at the end of the semester, semester, it's just wiped. So Mm. Uh, they they start over for the next class basically using the same word and they can enroll in so it can be used in multiple ways yeah. outside of just emergency response too well, and it's, it's smart because you got to hit them where they live the, the phone is the only place you really can reliably communicate with students but uh, thank you douglas and we'd love to set up some time so that you can get some further exploration into that and uh, we can really dive in deep for you there Looks like our friend Jacques is also interested in the demo, judging by the chat. We'll set that up, Jacques. Um, thank you. 